Welcome back to Lost in Rosha, the ultimate journey through the Stormlight Archive. I'm Christian Kremling. And I'm Jimmy Stormblust. Today, we are diving into chapters 47, 48, and 49 of The Way of Kings, book one in the Stormlight Archive. If you haven't read it yet, uh, get out of here because we're not only going to talk about this book. We're going to talk about all the books that came after it in the Stormlight Archive as well. Uh, any Cosmere spoilers, we will uh, throw up a little warning uh, in the audio to let you know so you can fast forward. Uh, but regardless, if you're uh, if you're still here, welcome. Welcome back. We're happy to have you here at Lost in Roshar. And uh, Christian, how are you doing? I'm doing good, mate. And... Um... I wanted to let you know I'm a fan of your I'm a fan of your work and I saw it I saw more of it this week actually. Uh, I was telling you before the podcast I as a fan of Avatar one of the you know the the minority of the largest grossing franchise ever or whatever. <laughs> I bought the new game and I wanted to see uh, the amazing graphics of Pandora and run around and everything but I never knew I was going to get the voice acting of Jimmy Stormblessed because the only male voice <laughs> of the characters is literally the i don't understand bit oh from no last, from last week my character is just like hey guys like what are we doing let's <laughs> build a base yeah i know and i Aww. and it's like i'm enjoying being immersed in this alien world and then your voice just comes through being like guys i need more arrows you know <laughs> Can you turn down the dialogue volume? Is that not option? <laughs> just zero percent, and it's just subtitles, just ambient Maybe music and that. subtitles, bro. That might be the way to go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to adopt that. I mean, but, I would uh, consider that voice to be anime protagonist number one, um, or side <laughs> character anime protagonist for an English dub, because I'm just channeling my um, Attack on Titan hatred oh, no. <laughs> for a certain character. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, so like, as everyone knows, I'm sure I'm a massive Attack on Titan fan and I'm a Japanese dub snob. And when I got Jimmy into the series, he's like, I don't do subtitles, you know, dyslexia and all that. Fair enough. But all the characters sound terrible. In first right? season, it's bad. It is like a squeal fest. Like, ah! gonna get us <laughs> so, and you know anime uh in general is like over the top right yeah. like yeah. they monologue and like i can't believe i lost my mother like and then they would go into every detail of like where that ran like who's gonna make my toast in the morning you know it's just like the dumbest <laughs> things and you're just like please, please there is a it. an ex like a an, an astounding amount of internal monologue in that first season yeah. it's just like people zipping around being like wow i should have said that back there but now that i'm here i'm gonna do this and what if i do that <gasps> then that will happen and then it's just like i don't know I, it's too much it's do too you much. get that feeling sometimes with stormlight <laughs> oh, oh jimmy jimmy just dipping his toes in look at him he's he's a bit I'm worried asking questions bro uh I, <laughs> look when you when you're a fan of anime you see some resemblances is that the right? I feel like I said that word wrong. You yes. see a resemblance, okay. but not yet. You know when I do see it when when Zeth is fighting Kaladin and they're they're chatting so much up there. They're they're hosting a podcast up. Chatty Kathy's up in the sky. <laughs> yeah, they really they really like get into the source of things as they're trying to kill each other. Do you? I'm guessing you get it. The uh the anime. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Little bit, a little bit. <laughs> Um, and it's not a bad thing necessarily. I mean, there's a lot of stuff anime also does really, really well. Uh, Sanderson definitely understands the spectacle of a showdown, right? That that's oh, something yeah. that he does extremely well. And I think that's one of anime's best strengths too, is, is a lot of the best anime moments that I'm aware of are showdowns. Mm, yeah. Look for me, it's a selling point. And, but like you said, there's pros and cons to anime. And when I sit down to watch an anime, I kind of accept them. But when yeah. I read a novel like this, they'll stick out a bit more. Yeah. But let me tell you, like the way Kaladin killed the Shard Bearer, aka Shallan's brother, today was the most anime thing so far. The way he caught the spearhead, yes, as it was falling. Oh, that was gloriously anime. A pretty yeah. dope scene, by the way. Yeah, that really was very cool. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, these chapters are a bit juicy today. Forty-seven, forty-eight, and forty-nine. Um, they're not terribly long, but. A lot goes on. So much to dive into. And by the way, everybody, this is our final episode of the year. Yes. This is uh, our, our swan song for 2023, the year we started the podcast. Things will never be the same again. Maybe. Ever. 
and then <laughs> big shout out to you know everyone that that tunes in and stuff i think if you combine all the the listens over all the platforms i think we're pretty close to a hundred thousand plays i think wow um, which is pretty impressive for being around less than a year so we, we appreciate that a lot obviously cosmere and well stormlight archive stuff is, is is pretty popular so i don't know how much of that is just you know mass appeal and how much of that's actually our show uh, <laughs> it's all us mate it's but, all re- us. but hey regardless it, it's still pretty cool and yeah the, the year's kind of closing out and we're gonna go two weeks and, and enjoy the holiday and we'll be back in the new year to actually wrap up this part part three is going to be coming to a close in our next episode and those chapters are really short so we'll probably do uh some span reads after those and then the time after that is three interludes that are very interesting so yeah we're getting into the meat and potatoes of this book and i keep forgetting you know zeth versus kaladin's coming not in this book wait it's not not in this this book book, no mate geez slow down we've got another 1500 pages so much (laughs) of words of radiance and the way of kings mixed up and also i get uh oathbringer and rhythm of war Uh, confused all the time um I mean, the best we get is jumping over a chasm. That's as that's as crazy as we're getting this book. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. No, you're right. It's coming back to me now. But it's a great jump. It's like the best. God, I gotta wait that, that long for Zeth versus Kaladin. God. Oh man, we are a year away. But look, by then it'll be book five. We can, we can, you know. Yeah, we'll be throw words of radiance in the trash. Who needs that book? Whoa, Honestly. whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> whoa. We, gotta, we gotta get back on track. <laughs> in book five, my god! Next year is the year of Stormlight, mate. I'm telling you, 2024. The hype levels. <sighs> we're not ready for the hype levels. Like we've been hyped. I've been hyped since I got Rhythm of War for the next book. Yeah. But the internet is. You have no idea how many thumbnails are about to hit your YouTube homepage of like someone <laughs> with their hands out and their like eyes really wide, being like book five predictions. They're going to be everywhere, but yeah, just know we've been predicting the whole time. Especially you. I mean, you've really been on this train for quite a while. It's a, uh, it's kind of like me. I, I tote and brag all the time that I was carrying the banners. Of the Song of Ice and Fire in the Dark Ages of 2019 until House of the Dragon. Yeah. And, and, you know, we came out victorious. We came out of the chasms and and we we still held the banners. And thank God it's all been saved. Um, But, yeah, you've been on this this theory train for a long time to the point where I think some of the stuff that you've covered has become pretty popular i mean some of your your things that you've pointed out uh we had someone say that they're a big fan of the baby champ uh baby champion theory because they saw it on your channel like you, you're a you're a place to go to hear these i love the baby champion theory and a lot of these i jump on the backs of other theories that have been made or the seeds of theories and i just i just take them to their full extent mm-hmm. um but yeah i can't wait to do more of that and I can't wait. Look, you don't see my face as often on the channel. And I can't wait for the depressing moment where I look back at my like rhythm oh, of yes. war videos to this and just be like, oh, yes, that's a lot less hair and a lot more wow. wrinkles. And it's my biggest soul. gripe with doing YouTube videos is that yeah. I'm literally watching myself die in real time. <laughs> and like it, it, it's starting to get to me a bit. I'm not going to lie. Like, I feel like I look older than ever before this year. Um, I think buying a house just did me in <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the whole yeah. process just killed me. Um, but it, you know, it's weird. Rhythm of War doesn't feel like it was that long ago. Like, I feel like I'm still recovering from like reading all four stormlight books in, in order, but it has been a couple of years it's, and dude, it's been like three years since that book came out. I look like a different person. Our film day. I remember, <laughs> I don't think it's up anywhere. I think I unlisted it cause it's, uh, I don't know. I just unlisted it, but it was, um, I made a little skit about when that book came out. It was like this holy, this holy glowing book in my living room. (laughs) And I like, I stumble across it. (laughs) I should probably do a sequel when the fifth book comes out, but I look like so different. I look so different. And I remember I could just set up my camera and just film. And now I'm like, Oh God, I, I got to get this angle right. Cause otherwise this is, well, rough. you're in a new place and everything. I mean, that, that, that definitely is yeah. something you got to figure out. I, yeah. um, I'm excited, dude. I think I think it's going to be a, a good time. I know we talk about it almost every episode, but that just shows the anticipation is building and building and building. And we, we know it's coming like the the, yeah. the title wave is has already started 
for us. Uh, but the people upon shore will, will know very swiftly uh, what, what's about to happen. So it's, it's, it's going to be a good time. A lot of theories are going to be proven wrong or correct. And then a whole batch of new ones is going to come out. So it's, it's going to be a fun time. I'm ready for all of our theories to be totally discredited and for the re-listenability of this to be absolutely squandered. I think that, <laughs> that people will enjoy in 20 years going yeah. back and seeing what people thought was because I do this all the time. Mm. I, whenever I read a chapter in a song of ice and fire and I go to cover it on bend the knee, I go back on the old forums, like way back mm. in, the, in the world of ice and fire forums in 2002, 2004, before any of the show stuff had been confirmed or whatever. And dude, the stuff that people like were coming up with, you're like, wow, it could have went that way. Like it's, it's, I love that. That's, That's awesome. actually my favorite when like you get an unspoiled, untainted, like not zeitgeist opinion on yeah. something. I think yeah. that stuff's awesome. And and funny thing is there's still a lot of really obscure, outstanding theories back on those forums that have not been disproven yet. Oh, and there's stuff that was formulating like book two, you know, and it's That's like, awesome. Oh, I love that. Didn't, I do. Too, I mean, dude. I'll keep it vague for the Song of Ice and Five people who are somehow just in the beginning of book one. But I'm pretty <laughs> sure like one of the biggest theories R plus L equals J was figured out already with just the one book, which is crazy. Um, but like I – that's why I enjoy having you on the podcast because like I'm kind of part of the zeitgeist of the Stormlight fandom, whereas, you know, you pop, you pop in once a week. I'm ignorant, yeah. And yeah. you come in with your wild theories that I'm not even thinking that way at all, which is great. And some people might not like that, but I'm telling I you. Right now, I don't know if the listenership. I it. I appreciate it because like it just becomes an echo chamber, and it just we slowly form to one conclusion, and it's like where's the variety, you know? I mean, are we talking about One Piece or Stormlight? I'm confused, <laughs> mate. It's all fandoms. It's all <laughs> fandoms. You can't escape it. But um, we like to keep it. We keep an open mind here on Lost in Rosha. And it's yeah, been I wouldn't, a blast I wouldn't entertain anything. You know, it's like drugs. I'll do anything once. You know, I just, <laughs> I'm Not just kidding. In case my employer is listening, yeah. yeah just, <laughs> and people, when they're listening in 20 years, they'll be listening to us in like the language of their choice because Spotify now makes you agree that they can use AI to use our voices to put us in any language. It's a scary time, mate. What, Which what is language? scary, but also kind of cool. It's yeah, it's scary and cool. Yeah. I think if anything, that that's one of the good uses for it. Yeah. Cause I, I, I'm worried, right? Cause I'm actually, I'm learning Italian in my free time because hmm. my, my background's Italian and you know, I don't want the the language to die with me. So I'm like, okay, let's learn this thing. But then I'm thinking, AI Christians are going to be speaking Italian in like yeah, two you already got to figure it out, bro. <laughs> yeah, like what am I doing? You can just hold up your phone; it'll speak Italian for you. Yeah, you can use the Google Translate. Yeah, yeah. But there's really? something satisfying. Like uh, my brain feels amazing learning a language. Yeah, mine uh, feels like mush every time I try, <laughs> and I just like you know what? I'll just try to decipher the backwoods accents of West Virginia instead. Like that's enough. It's like it's not even English. It's a whole other thing. Um, hey, you got you a know. bunch of fellow hometowners. From yeah, we got to wash our clothes going up there to Washington and in the creek, and <laughs> you know the, the holler, the whole the whole nine. Uh, there, did you see whole, that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, a bunch of people shouted you out. That's awesome. I was trying to remember when I told people where I was from. <laughs> and I was like, I probably shouldn't have done that on the internet. That, when you're uh, talking about the um, the snake pit that you were in, the ball pit. Oh, Idlewild. Yeah. Bro, Idlewild was wild. No yeah. pun intended. The snake, <laughs> the, dude, the snake in the ball pit was crazy. <laughs> I'm just imagining like your exact head now, but just like on your four year old body. Just screaming. funny enough. I did have a big old fat head when I was a kid. Like I remember <laughs> they measured heads in first grade and I had the fattest head in the class and I thought I won. And then I realized very quickly that it wasn't a good thing. And everyone's like, look at the fat head. And I'm like, oh, this is miserable. And I couldn't ever wear the baseball caps when I played sports. I always had to order like the dummy size. Oh, like, my God. Get one for the for the freak show over here. <laughs> The teacher's just giving you their helmet. They're there, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. But it's okay. You grow into your head. And, uh, Apparently. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Four heads getting larger by the day. Five uh, head, six head, seven head. As the years go. I mean, mine too. My hair's receding like 
like bloody Kremlings from a, from a fire, mate. And it's just slowly going back. And I'm never going to do the... I'm never going to do like the the horseshoe pattern. If it happens, I'm going full Megan. Heisenberg and we're just, we're just shaving it off, baby. I look forward to the horseshoe hair pattern <laughs> in book eight theory video. <laughs> then I'll, I'll truly embody like the ultimate ardent. Oh, <laughs> I think they, I think they shave, don't they? I don't know. I'll see. I'll be like Christian ardent. That's that going to be like your fourth ideal is yeah. you having a horseshoe <laughs> hair pattern. Oh God. I can't pull it off. I can't. Pull Some people it off. can. I've seen it. Hey, my dad's got it and it's been his quintessential look, but um, I'm, I love it. So my dad has it as well. I can imagine without it. It's the dad cut. Maybe whenever I have a child, I'll embrace the horseshoe. You know, I, I feel like you can impart some good lessons with that, with that hairstyle without it. I might not listen as much, you know? Yeah, you know, everyone has their 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 look they can rock. I think once you find it, you stick with it. Yeah. Be consistent. Be reliable. Is this what a life it? motivation course or is this a story? <laughs> yeah. Where are we going with this? <laughs> and that's think- our sponsor, Hims, for all your male health. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but look, hey, let's head towards Storm Blessings. Yeah, we got a lot. We got a lot to go over here in these chapters. We do. Um Three chapters, they're all pretty stacked, and it starts with chapter 47, which is one year ago in the timeline, and it's called Storm Blessings. Kaladin's enlistment is almost up, but he has already decided to re-up because he cannot face his parents for the failure of the protection of Tien, because Tien's dead. Uh, This is whenever Kaladin ends up bribing and getting a recruit that looks like Tien, who is Sen, uh, which Tien and Sen kind of kind of similar right yeah um so he ends up wondering why the alethi fight amongst themselves so much when they also join to fight each other or fight with each other against foreign invaders he walks by the surgeons to hand over another bribe so his men will receive quick aid on the battlefield a windsprint makes the pouch stick to his belt making him stumble he tosses it to ven the chief surgeon when he gets to his squad, Sen is already there. He looks so much like Tien, Kaladin has to look away. After scanning the battleground and conferring with Dalet, Kaladin's squad charges forward at the horn call. So we go into this battle. A lot of Kaladin's friends and squad dies, and Kaladin ends up slaying a shard bearer, which happens to be Shalon's brother, which he does not obviously know that at this point, but mm-hmm. we do. Um, and then that means that Kaladin should be able to pick up the blade, but uh, just as he approaches Amaram, Kaladin attacks again, aiming for the head. And this is where he gets it, and he does not take the blade. He refuses it because that would make him one of them. In quotes, mm. a corrupt light eyes. He tells Kareb or Koreb uh, that it is his, and everyone's shocked. It's crazy. And he's like, "What?" Me? You mean it? <laughs> Shark bleed. <laughs> Dude, this first paragraph of this chapter is is ripe with rocks and lights and different colors and we've been talking a lot about mm. how colors seem to be mentioned uh at every single turn uh very interesting stuff i mean they, they say the rock caught the light spinning it in different colors depending on the direction he turned it beautiful miniature crystals shimmered like the cities made of gemstones mentioned in the lore i highlighted that line because mm. i was like is that a reference to Eritheru? That's Cities what I made know. of gemstones. I mean that there are some in there. I wouldn't say it's made of it though. So I, I'm curious to know what, what that's about. Gemstone I was going to ask you if you knew because it seems like it might be a hint towards something in the past. Yeah, I mean, think of all the advantages of having a gemstone city on this planet. Like you could. You could, I mean, I, I'm assuming if he ever goes back to Roshar in future Cosmian times, it's going to be gemstones bloody everywhere, powering yeah. everything. Um, there's a, there's that, there's very much that like ancient aliens vibe to Roshar of like the advanced civilization gone. It's my you know? favorite trope in fantasy. I love it. I love it. And so I think that's good. why it's so popular in like our, you know, real culture. People want people want that because it's, it's 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 exciting to believe that that's that would be the case. We started it, it, a whole debate about the pyramids in the comments of that one week where we talked about the Palinaeum and how it was built. We started a whole fight down there. Yeah, I just stayed away from it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> um but yeah, the, no, it's cool and I 
I did. I like, I, I immediately latched onto this paragraph too. I'm like, oh, The Rock, he's checking it out. Like, I also think he starts, Sanderson starts his scenes like you're watching a movie. Think of this as like a, a new scene in the adaptation. You start with like the human close moment. It's just like Kaladin looking at The Rock and then we slowly ease into the people and then the battlefield. Like it's very like, very much like how you would structure a TV show scene. Yeah. Or, uh, you know, because like some books you think it's difficult to adapt or how they're going to do this. But it's it's almost like he's writing a, um, a, not a script. What's, what, what's the word? Like a like scene. A, yeah. He's, he's like, like writing a television scene sometimes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, not much else I can make from that. Did you, did you have any crazy theories for that one? Uh, I did not. It's just like, I still am of the belief that, uh, these different colors and rocks seem to be very important, um, just overall. And I know that maybe it's just like a symptom of, of something else, but I don't know. I keep thinking like rocks are going to be awakened. We see some of that said in some of the death rattles and whatnot that I, I, I just feel like it's significant and colors definitely matter. I um, agree. I think it's going to be one of those big Cosmere connections. Most likely every, like, like I said, every Kremlin is sus and every rock is sus. I mean, yes. if you can touch some rocks in this world and hear voices, I'm looking at every rock. <laughs> yes. You need to be flipping them all over and seeing what's underneath them without a doubt. Yeah. Yeah, probably some Kremlings, mate. Maybe the maybe the Kremlings are in on the maybe. <laughs> How can we put this all together? They're in the rocks. They're talking. I, I could see it. Maybe it's their cousins. <laughs> they got like little. They've got little like ants. They got this whole um, network of trails going through them. That'd be so cool. Just with little binoculars <laughs> poking through. Um, shout like, out what to. What if the rocks Don't. are like listening devices for the Kremlings? Oh, see, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. I love that. Um, yeah. But we see some Sylphrena action here with her mucking around with Kaladin a year ago. Interesting. Yeah. What What's up with this? Um, we, we said we were going to be paying attention to his flashbacks to see like where the interactions. I think this one's pretty on the nose. Yeah. Oh man, this is like a hundred percent. Um, Sanderson saying to the audience, Hey, check it out. Syl was here, but I wonder, like, I think this is the earliest confirmed appearance of her so far. So that far that we've seen in the way of Kings. Um, it seems to, and, and it seems to me that we're going to make this connection with Shalan. Like you say, on bend the knee, reading the chapters in order illuminates things. Um, and when you line up the Shalan and Kaladin chapters, you notice the, the similarities between how Sprint approached somebody and they kind of dip their toes in the water with you first, like how Mm -hmm. we're seeing with the cryptics and Shalan. And that's kind of what I took from this is like, that's what Sill's doing with Kaladin. Yeah. It's to give us further, maybe suspicion that that's exactly what's happening with Shalan. Right. Yeah. And it's also to point something else out, which I want to mention once we get to Shalan's brother showing up here. Because my question is like, what's he doing here? And there's two possible answers. There's, well, I guess I'll just say them now, but we'll go into them a bit later because I want to talk about Sen and his death rattle and stuff. Um, but he's either there to kill Amaram or he's there to kill Kaladin. Um, oh. Both of which we can look into later. Interesting. Okay, yeah. the second one kind of threw me there. Huh. Yes. I really like the, uh, uh, you know, going kind of chronologically through this, whenever Kaladin considers that the Alethi are fighting amongst themselves so much. Um, I just thought in general, like that's kind of a, a good point to bring up. Uh, it's something that the reader would probably ask themselves. But one of the things that stood out to me um, was this. It said they were uh, the enemy. That was what they were called. Yet whenever there was an actual border dispute with the uh, Vedans or the Reshi, those men uh, would stand upside Amaram's troops and they would fight together. It was as if the night watcher toyed with them playing some forbidden game of chance, occasionally setting the men on his game board as allies and then setting them to kill one another the next day. And I had this big brain idea. Ooh. Of like what if at some point like the the humans and all of the parshendi will have to team up against an external invader oh, i can see that 
Yeah. I would love that actually. Cause like I could see that as like a uh, book eight or nine thing. It's like the Skadrians from Mistborn are coming quickly. Let's hop on our chasm fiend. Yeah. You know, that, like, that's what I'm saying. Like that. Roshar comes together yeah. and becomes a planet wide effort to oh. fight off another alien force. Right. Now that would be so cool, dude. That's, I feel like this is kind of a hint towards that, but also the night watcher being mentioned in general is just interesting. Yeah, it's, I like that the Night Watch is kind of like a boogeyman. Yeah, like they all know about it and mm-hmm. it's real, which is. I wonder how common it is for people to be like, yeah, I, I met the Night Watcher because like Dalinar did and Taravangian did. Like Dalinar did, and that's why you can't you remember his wife, and Taravangian did. That's why he can do the, you know, smart, dumb thing. Yeah. So, like, can you just go visit her? Like, do you just, do you just, you know head down Maybe to the so. woods yeah. it, it might be possible but look he brings up a great point of like this is all just so, like this is so ridiculous this whole situation you know that one minute we're killing each other one minute we're on the same team like what, what's the point the engines of war just keeping things moving you know yeah yeah um i wanted to go full conspiracy mode when he's like oh my god sin looks so much like Tien. And I was like, really now? <laughs> you don't see. Sounds like, sounds like a Kremlin impersonating Tien what? to get closer to Kaladin. To, <laughs> to, to, and then I ran out of steam. Like, I'm like, why would they do that? Like, I think do you it's probably that, likely that Kaladin just sees Tien in every young male that comes across. I, I, you're right, but imagine like the the Kremlin hive mind being like, look, this, he's got such a soft spot for his brother. Let's just keep making clones to to go near Kaladin and watch this night radiant, who's who's like our first night radiant in thousands of years. Um, so we'll keep making Kremlin coffees to pull his sympathy, so we can spy on him. Oh, that's my that's my. That's your big one. theory for the week. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, I uh, I'm full. I'm on board. I'm. It's my. It's that's my truth. Speak your truth. Hey, hey, hey. Sanderson has said that a certain type of um, there's like in a another Cosmere series there are like intimidating doppelganger types. I I won't say the name just just to keep it Cosmere spoiler free. But there are like people in the Cosmere that can like totally copy somebody, and he said there are some in Stormlight. So I'm just saying the imposter theory is a fun one to go like go with. You never know. Yeah, who it's someone one is. Sanderson does like. Um, maybe someone's been impersonating someone that we've seen here in the series. Like what? Maybe maybe that's. Oh yeah, thing. he said we've seen it. Like we, he said we've seen them at some point. Someone's impersonating somebody. But who? in Roshar? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In Roshar, yeah. He said in Stormlight, it's happening. Bro, who we is don't know it? who. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we got to watch out, bro. I know who it is. Who is it? <laughs> I'm being serious. I think I know who it is. Who? Gavilar. Oh, can you imagine, mate? That would I be feel huge. Like there's been so many hints that Gavilar's coming back. Or like a fake Gavilar. Or like maybe oh. the impersonator. He comes back, but it's not him. Like it's someone impersonating him. Yeah, I guess I was thinking that maybe the Gavilar that we saw assassinated is not the real Gavilar. Now, that would be quite something. I mean, I, that would would, I think people that. might get upset by that, actually. I would <laughs> argue that the new prologue discredits that just because like, look, and this is not like reading the prologue spoilers because like everyone knows it's Gavilar's perspective, but I'm just saying it's Gavilar's perspective, you know? Yeah, you're right. So, but he said we've already can you seen imagine, it. Can you imagine like it cuts to Gavilar's prologue and he's like, they don't know I'm not him yet. So like, can you imagine? It would have been cool like if it, I died. This many years ago, can what? you imagine? People would have lost their minds. That would have. It's almost like too twisty. But hey, it's <laughs> too, fun to think about. I, like I think it. it would be really interesting. So, so he's saying that as of today, we have seen an impersonator. Yes, bro, we got to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. No one's safe, mate. Nobody's safe. Um, but hey, Kaladin, somebody. You want to keep an eye on, and I'm 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 saying people around all of our main characters are. So I, I would assume that they're Probably. like someone kind of around, not making too much. Um, actually, now that I'm saying that, I think I do know who it is. But I, 
Okay. Uh, I'm just like thinking of my spoiler tag here. I don't think I really need to go. Okay, somebody in Dalinar's like Dalinar's crew, like his um, what's the word for it? His like entourage squad. Maybe his entourage is a better word. Like all of his like you know squires and Orbiters. everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's orbited. Yes, the Giga Chad gravitational pull. Um, <laughs> One of them is either a world hopper or one of those imposters. I don't remember, actually. Um, it might actually, we can check that later. I think it might be one of them. Regardless, we'll, we'll hear about it in the comments. Somebody will know. Um, but not to say that there might not be more. There could be more hmm. out there. But, uh, dude, do you want to talk? Okay. Do you want to talk about why he might want to kill Kaladin here? Hello? Yes, please. All right. All right. Okay. History lesson on Shalan's brother and what's going on with him. So he's working with, well, he's like trying to join the Skybreakers, which is like an order, order of Radiant who are led by Nail, who's like, Nail's, Nail is this herald. You see him in interludes a lot and you see him later in the series and he's just like killing Knights Radiant. He's like, no Knights Radiant allowed. You might remember the chapter where he kills like this cobbler, this old man cobbler who's like talking to a spren. And then Nail rocks up and he's like, no, not allowed. Kills him. Anyway, they're just like, no Knights Radiant allowed. So there's the argument that um, he's there to kill Amaram because Amaram is part of a group called the Sons the Sons of Honor. And the Sons of Honor want to bring back the Knights Radiant. That's like their whole thing. That's all they care about. So there's the argument that Nail's like, hey, go kill that guy. He's fighting for the other team. Or the other argument is, hey, there's this Spren hanging around Amaran's camp and it looks like someone's forming a bond. Like, just kill that guy on the battlefield and prove oh, yourself. Oh, wow. And then I, I looked a bit more into this today and in Oathbringer, when Shallan's doing deeds for the Ghostbloods and stuff, Mraes, do you remember Mraes, the guy, the Ghostblood guy? Yes. Um, he's kind of like dangling info to Shalan, like if you do this i'll tell you about your brother you know um and he does so and he writes a little bit about this um and it's kind of what i said in but a lot better explained and he even talks about this moment right this is an oathbringer man this, this is awesome so i'm gonna read uh, this it's a little long but it's like pretty illuminating for some theory theory making here oh my all right so okay there are at least two major institutions on Rosha other than ourselves. This is from Mraes, which um, presaged the return, oh, presaged, presaged? I don't actually know that word. Pres <laughs> anyway, the return of the void bringers and the desolations, the letter read. You are familiar with the first of these, the men who call themselves the Sons of Honor, the old king of Alethkar, the Blackthorn's brother, Gavala Colon, was a driving force in their expansion. He brought Meridus Amaram into their fold. The fun thing about Gavilar is he was working with both the Ghostbloods and Sons of Honor. He was kind of <laughs> into everything. He was playing the field. He was. He really was. Um, as you no doubt discovered upon infiltrating Amaran's mansion in the war camps, the Sons of Honor explicitly worked for the return of the Desolations. They believed that only the Voidbringers would cause the Heralds to show themselves, and they believed that a Desolation would restore both the Knights Radiant and the classical strength of the Voran Church. King Gavilar's efforts to rekindle the Desolations are likely the true reason he was assassinated. Though there are, though there were many in the palace that night who had reason to see him dead, um, and then he gets to explain. So that's what who Amram's with and what they're doing, and then he gets to explain who Shalan's brothers with. So he goes on to say, the second group who knew the Desolations might return are the Skybreakers, led by the ancient herald. I'm just going to use his nickname, Nail, often simply called Nail. Oh, he does it for me. Great. <laughs> the, sky, <laughs> the Skybreakers are the only order of Radiance that did not betray its oaths during the Recreants. They have maintained a continuous clandestine um, line from the ancient days. Nail believed that men speaking the words of the other orders would hasten the return of the Voidbringers. We do not know how this could possibly be true, but as a herald, Nail has access to knowledge and understanding beyond us. And then he kind of just says, hey, the heralds are crazy. Uh, uh, don't trust him. And then he goes, other, um, and then he said he started 
picking people to kill off people who are bonding spren. And he goes, if the person had already bonded a spren, Nail usually went in person. If not, he sent a minion. A minion like your brother, Hilarin. And this is where it gets interesting. It says, your mother, ooh, Shalan's mother, the best. Harold, totally. Your mother had an intimate contact with a Skybreaker acolyte. And you know the result of that relationship. Your brother was recruited because Nail was impressed with him. Nail may have also learned, though through means that we don't understand, that a member of your house was close to bonding a spren. If this is true, they came to believe that Halaren was the, the one they wanted. They recruited him with displays of great power and shards. Halaren had not yet proved himself worthy of a spren bond. Nail is exacting with his recruits. Likely, Halaren was sent to kill Amaram as a test. Either that or he took it upon himself as a way of proving his worthiness for knighthood. It is also possible that the Skybreakers knew someone in Amaram's army was close to bonding a spren, but I believe it likelier that the attack on Amaram was simply a strike against the Sons of Honor. From our spying upon the Skybreakers, we have records showing that the only member of Amaram's army to have bonded a spren was the long since uh, was long since eliminated. The bridgeman was not, so far as we understand, known to them. If he had been, he would have certainly been killed as his months as a slave. Oh my gosh! This so that's why he was there. I mean, there, it's not a question. He, that's why he was there. Well, he well, Maurice is like it's either to kill Amram or or to kill a bonded someone bonding a spread. I, I think don't. I think it's likely it's Kaladin. Um, mm. It also kind of vindicates Cal- vindicates Kaladin in some ways, and I wonder if Syl had a feeling that this was all going to happen, and that's why she was kind of interfering here, possibly Ooh, like, I like, like the butter- that, like the butterfly effect, yeah. um, and knowing that forces were coming for them, and she doesn't even know what she's doing, right? She's just acting on instinct. But mm. the more interesting thing is that someone in your household was close to bonding a spren, but it was actually Shalon, <laughs> right? Yeah, and how do they know that, right? Do you think I stopped there, Jimmy? No, I kept digging, right? So I just oh got, I started con- command effing everywhere. Halaran, <laughs> every book, every mention. Um, I didn't get through all of them. But there is a curious chapter in Words of Radiance where we first see H- Halaran rock up. He comes back home. He's like, sup, Shalan? I got a shard blade. And everyone's really confused. So this is like soon after Shalan's mother was killed. And her dad's pretending it was him, even though we know it was Shalan and all this stuff, right? So Halaran comes home and he's like, hey, Shalan, I bought you some, you know, some drawing stuff. Um, and he's actually being really nice to her. And Shalan just starts drawing like dead bodies and stuff. He's like, stop, stop doing that. <laughs> just draw. Chill, draw, chill. Just <laughs> rainbows. And I feel bad for Halaran. He's like, he bought like... <laughs> <laughs> art supplies for Crayola sure. set. <laughs> yeah. And she's like, la la la, dead bodies. He's like, and then I bought Balat an axe sound pop, and that didn't end well. Like he says that as well. He's just got a bunch of very disturbed siblings. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> and then he dies. <laughs> yeah, and then he dies. Jeez. Anyway, and then he comes and then Shalan's dad rocks up. He's like, How dare you? He's all, you know, abusive. And then he gets his shard blade out. And then there's this moment that had me thinking. Um, okay, here we go. So he, he, he points the shard blade described exactly as the blade he's gotten now at his dad. And then his dad's like, got his hands up. He's like, hello. Um, you don't know what you think, you know, your mother dash. And then, it, and then like, he gets interrupted. I will not listen to your lies. Uh, what? <laughs> What was he about to say, mate? How Your does was anyone Harold. not, dude? Shalon, <laughs> Shalon's backstory is the most interesting thing in the series. Like, it's it's not even close for me. I'm sorry. Oh, but dude, I, it's so juicy. Yeah, I mean, right there, like it, it 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 sells itself. Yeah, I mean, look, there's the whole. I don't think, yeah, and look, in that moment, I don't think he's going to be like, your mother was actually killed by Shalon. Like, you should be killing her. No, I think he's going to say your mother was involved with, you know, like, he would elaborate. He put us, she put us in this position. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, there's something sus going on with Shalon's mom, for sure. I argue, Harold. It could be, it could just be as simple as, yes, Shalon killed her. But uh, I don't know. There's I mean, it, it, there's certainly something 
up with it. And who knows what her motivations are? Like we're tying it to things of bigger nature, but like she might have had a whole different idea of what was going on. So it, it, it's it's hard to say. I mean, that's the fun thing about Heralds. They all go crazy. So yeah. we could ter- like her perspective can be completely messed with for to justify whatever she was doing. But hey, man, we got a death battle in here, and shout out for the 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 real ones who were listening in probably like episode three where we actually jumped to this chapter. Yes, we did talk about this. And when I read it, I was like, oh, yeah, we've yeah. treaded this before. And that is Sen's death rattle, which is this. Voice actor Sen's- Jimmy. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah. Sen stopped wheezing. He convulsed once. Eyes still open. He watches. The boy hissed. <laughs> the black piper in the night. He holds us in his palm. Playing a tune that no man can hear. Sen's <laughs> eyes glazed over. He stopped breathing. Sen from like 19th century London. <laughs> <laughs> Oi! <laughs> oh, he's playing a tune no one, no one man, no one man, no man can hear that. What's that? What's going on? Do you need to show shine, mister? <laughs> <laughs> Please, Kaladin, can I have some more? Kaladin? <laughs> Kaladin? <laughs> <laughs> Kaladin. Kaladin like is too close to Ben Laden, you know? Like, <laughs> oh my <laughs> god, Terry. These jokes are gonna stop. Oh uh, mate, I don't think I've had to edit I'm gonna have to edit an episode more than this one. Oh, you Jimmy, should leave that one in. Jimmy Jimmy's been unhinged. If there's any weird cuts, it's because Jimmy's throwing curveballs at me and I'm just ducking and weaving over here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good joke. <laughs> I'll, t- I'll keep that one. We'll allow that. Hey, man, w- I've been demonetized once. I'm treading lightly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot this goes on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were in the uncensored uh, <laughs> podcast world. You know what? I can't wait. When when Spotify, you know, takes our identity with AI and changes our language, I want to hear the voice acting of these quotes in That's every such language. such a good point. Oh, my yeah. God. What's it going to do with that? Could you imagine that in, like, German? <laughs> that would be aggressive. <laughs> it would be very aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I wonder what would happen if you spoke another language. What would it do with the translation? Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm sure there's a lot of holes in it, right? Because like probably clean it up. Like, I listen to the Lex Friedman um, examples of it because they've got it on Spotify where they, they translate it. And I'm like, that yeah. sounds perfect, but it's not a language that I understand. Uh, I'm sure actual native speakers would be like, this is a bit. This is a yeah, bit it's wrong. like Google Translate. Sometimes it, it gets things wrong. Yeah. Well, regardless, I guess we should talk about this death rattle. Um, mm-hmm. The Black Piper. Um, from memory, this is a reference to a un, an unmade. Um, let me, I'm just doing a quick Google here. Um, sends death rattle. Because there are certain on May you, you hear about, but this is one you don't hear about too much. The Black Piper. I'm just trying to find this on the, the cop and line, well, mate. I'm I will say this. So, you know, he watches the Black Piper in the night. He holds us in his palm, playing a tune that no man can hear. And part of me feels like because this is a battle that where death should have been avoided because it's it's infighting. Hmm. That maybe, and we kind of talk like the Night Watcher is poisoning them to do this thing, Kaladin thinks, right? Well, what if the Unmade is the responsible for a lot of this infighting, right? Hmm. And also, we do know the music seems like it's going to play a big role in Stormlight. I yeah, I like I like the the idea, like the playing a tune no man can hear. Like you said, like how the Night Watcher could be playing with people's minds and stuff. Yeah, and just like how the thrill does it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and the thrill, exactly. Like, the thrill is, like, we know that's a fact. Yeah. So couldn't there be other forces and means of influencing mm. people to, to, to uh, you know, do what you want them to do? I think so. I agree. So here we go. So the, I found it on the cop of mind, and this is probably a retread of whenever we talked about this, but that's fine. That was like six months ago. So the Black Fisher is, or the Black Piper, is also is just like nicknames for Diagonathus, which is an unmade. Um, so it says Di- uh, Hesse um, writes in her Mythica 
there's like a whole moment where we get a bunch of epigraphs from this lady called Hesse who was studying the unmade. Um, she writes that Diagonathus may have been involved in the scouring of Amia, which is where the sleepless are from, hint, hint. Although she's unsure of the specifics, she also expresses that uh, uncertainty that they, are, that they are one of the unmade at all. Oh, okay. However, it likely seems that Diagonathus is truly the final unmade. As Jezrian, interesting, so Jezrian the Herald, in the guise of Ahu, refers to the Black Fisher together with two other unmade, Reshafir and Molash, during one of his conversations with Dalinar. Interesting. Okay. So when, when like, the Herald Jezrian is, like, the drunkard in Kolinar Palace, he has a few chats with Dalinar. Interesting that he, so he mentions these unmade to him. That'll be cool to look into. Whoa. Um, and he's mentioned in a couple of other death rattles. A lot of the death rattles talk about the unmade. Yeah. Um, so, look, I don't know what that unmade's up to. It's just another cool moment where um, the death rattles are just... It's like nuggets for the theory crafters. That Dank nuggies, if you will. And that's uh, Jimmy Stormblast's lovely, <laughs> lovely bow on the on the on the, <laughs> the segment there. We dank love nuggies. the dank, the dank nuggies that oh, are man. known within the Stormlight Archive. We're, we're like almost an hour in dank nuggies in the first chapter of three. This is going to be a big end of your episode. I love it. Yeah, um, I mean, there's a lot in this, right? Um, the anime moment. Can we talk about that, dude? Yeah, let's like, get when, to it. When Halaren shows up, the way he just slices the shard bearers are bloody terrifying, dude. They're terrifying. They really are. Yeah. The way he just like does this crazy swing and kills like fifteen guys, and they just all drop, eyes bulging and steaming. That is crazy. I that want to amazing. see that so bad. And I'll be honest, I know <sighs> that this is not your preferred way, but I would love to see that animated. I think that would look sick. That would be, I look, people are animating, fans are animating so much. I say animate this scene, man. Please, yes. This and also, so is there going to be a graphic novel ever? Because <laughs> that would be cool even to see on a graphic novel. That would be cool. The way I see it is like a overhead, almost like a drone shot of like Halarin just spinning and everyone dropping around him. Spin the wind. It's like, it's that move. It's that move in Diablo 4 when you're the barbarian. It's the windmill yeah. move. It's that one. That's just literally what he that's did. Your, that's the bread and butter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. All my points go into that skill. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to read this amazing moment where Kaladin gets this boy. And it's also um, evidence that Halarin had not sworn any oaths. Like, this is all just like a dead eye um, blade and everything, because we know that getting stabbed in the head does not kill you. If you're a radiant, if you're an actual radiant, like Shalan gets a crossbow bolt to the, to the head and just shrugs it off. Which is insane. by the way. Yeah. It's amazing. (laughs) That's one of the things there is a major power creep in this series, but I kind of love that, um, how hard they are to kill. Cause it's like, you have to get creative. Jimmy, why don't you take us through this amazing moment where Kaladin, uh, takes on Shalon's brother. Okay, yeah, absolutely. I, I would I would be uh, privileged to. <laughs> Kaladin bellowed in defiance, spinning, snatching the spearhead from the air. It had been falling tip down, and he caught it by about four inches of the half that remained, gripping it with his thumb on the stump and the sharp point extending down beneath his hand. The shardbearer brought his weapon around as Kaladin skidded to a stop and flung his arm to the side slamming the spearhead right in the shardbearer's visor slit. All fell still. I have found an artwork of this moment, and it shall be the thumbnail of this video. Let's go, dude. An absolutely glorious moment, which I will link you to right now. Yeah, please. Please it's do. It's so cool. Um, I mean, the fact that he did, he, he did a throwing knife initially, like that paragraph misses that. He does a throwing knife initially, Misses that, catches the broken spearhead, and then kills him. Like, come on, that's awesome. That's three sixty no scopes. That's that's pretty intense. Yeah, yeah, Kaladin straight up Duncan on kids. Um, but such a cool moment, and I think that finally, almost an hour in, brings us to like the end of that chapter, which I didn't think would be like this much conversation, but here we are. 
Did you see that artwork? How sick is it? Yeah, it's dope. Kaladin I kind of feel like the shard blade should be bigger. I mean, it's going off screen. It's like yeah. two meters up in the air. I want it bigger. <laughs> shard blades are ri- shard blades like Kingdom Hearts swords. They're that's next that's what I think of. Yeah, yeah, like, like uh, guts, berserk level. Exactly, iron, like big slab iron. Oh, dude, the the there's like someone made Sanderson a a shard blade, and him holding that thing, it's just huge. It's ridiculous. But they're gonna. <laughs> I wonder if it will look ridiculous in the adaptation i hope not no i i wouldn't be surprised even if they dumbed it down kind of like for instance iron throne on game of thrones you should have been much bigger. Oh. yeah it would be a shame like it's kind of the selling point like how big these weapons are and how extra it is i mean i think they will be large but i don't think it'll be book accurate okay because you remember they, they got to capture a general audience you know I think it, I think you can jap, you can capture a general audience with a bloody two meter know. blade. I don't know if my like father in law would <laughs> be down with that. You know what I mean? Like that's who you have to think about. You have to think about those people because mm, if yeah. those people watch a show, you know these are the people watching Mass Singer every week. Like they're gonna they're gonna bring the ratings. I'm just worried they'll be like, oh, if they do it normal, it's like just a lightsaber, like a fantasy lightsaber. You know. Ooh, well, that's certainly a distinction, but you know, familiarity sometimes is is good. Mm. Speaking of familiar things, <laughs> this is the worst segue ever. Strawberry, <laughs> we all know strawberry right. jam. Let's strawberry jam. Please have some, Shalon. Chapter forty eight. <laughs> Strawberry. So Shalon is sketching while in a hospital and on suicide watch, aren't we all? She is growing accustomed to the creatures with symbol heads who have been lurking in her drawings. She has her safe pouch button in her hospital robe. She notes how similar her current situation is to her time back at home in her father's estate, having every need seen to but unable to leave. Uh, The suicide attempt will make for an easy excuse to go home so she can use the trip home to learn how to use the soul soul caster. She ends up finishing the picture that she, uh, the picture of the place she went to when she did the soul casting and she ponders it. Yasna enters, tries to apologize. Not exactly skilled at that capsule ends up showing up and all of this results into the strawberry jam veal uh, scene where capsule tries to poison Yasna. And he ends up falling down and we hear Yasna yelling that Shalon has been poisoned. Uh, Shalon upends her safe pouch, revealing the stolen one. She feels a flash of heat through her insides before all goes to black. Uh, Very good chapter. Very fun. It's cool to see Yasna being so sweet to Shalon and saying that like if Shalon had been successful in a suicide attempt that the world would have lost one of the brightest scholars of their future. Uh, which is a huge compliment coming from Yasna. And I think that this this chapter is actually very important for Yasna's character, uh, which is funny because it's not her POV, but it's good stuff. Yeah, I agree. It is a really impactful chapter for Yasna. And I also had to remind myself of like the actual mechanics of what was going on here. Like what was the poison? How was it being deployed? Did you remember reading this that the poison was actually the bread and the and the jam was the antidote? i i did not um mm. in fact this whole scene went very different from what i remembered mm. and it, i don't know to, to you did you did you feel like it was really fast it was very fast very very fast i kind of remember it being a bit like i didn't expect it to be this quick and i forgot taravangian showed up just before it as well like, yeah <laughs> welcome yeah, to t- taravangian's in there and he he drops a big line <laughs> Oh, read it to me, mate. Which line are you talking about? Oh, man. Did I catch something you didn't? Oh, this is beautiful. Oh. <clears throat> Eventually, he reached Shalon's bedside. He smiled at her, sitting as one of his many attendants placed a padded stool for him. And young Shalon Devar, I was so terribly saddened to hear you of your accident. I apologize for not coming earlier. Duties of state kept me. <laughs> it's quite all right, your majesty. <laughs> oh, no. Shalon's got this, too. No, no, it, it is not. But it is what it must be. There are many who complain that I spend too much of my time here. Ah, uh, yes, I had that. I had that. And that's it. because this mofo <laughs> has been sitting here getting these death rattles in this hospital. <laughs> Very true. Oh, my sneaky, God. sneaky Sanderson. Sneaky Tara V. 
<laughs> Terry um, V coming through. <laughs> Terry V. Um, first of all, um, commendations for the Shalan whiny voice as well. Um, did enjoy that. I think it's either an old man or a whiny brat in the Stormlight Archive in your mind. Yes. Uh, well, characters. I'm also just not very talented at this, so I have to kind of <laughs> just stick to what I know. <laughs> um, but look, yeah, he is there. I also notice like every he's always muttering to the Ardens, like, yeah, you got any good ones? Any uh, got any good death rattles? Yeah, give me yeah. some of that good good. He he, <laughs> he absolutely is fiending for people's death rattles. <laughs> Imagine like there's the extra fantasy element of like it's his lifeblood. He must hear them to stay smart or something. Mm-hmm. That'd be fun. Um, I also, of course, and I'm sure people are the astute reader is waiting for me to point this out, but the description of Shadesmar. A few weeks ago, I did my Highway to the Sun theory video, like, man, what's going on with Shadesmar and the sun and everything? And the description here kind of backs up my theory or just like my line of thinking where it says, the distant that distant horizon with its powerful yet cold sun, clouds running toward it above, endless ocean below, making the sun look as if it were at the end of a long tunnel. Highway to the sun. Um, mm. What is that sun, man? It's going to be huge. There's no doubt about it that that sun is something. You big. want to know what I think it is? Oh, tell me. A dragon egg. <laughs> Where are my dragons? <laughs> In Shadesmar. In Shadesmar, Daenerys. In Shadesmar, yeah. Yep. That would be very cool if there was like a, a dragon rocking up in Roshar. I mean, Roshar's prime for dragons. I feel like they'd fit right in. I feel like we have to kind of get, I mean, I don't know. Are chasm fiends the stand in for that large? Give, cool give, give chasm fiends some like Dune esque mm. wings. And then we got ourselves a bug dragon, you know, dude, bug dragons go hard. I guess cheery cheery is that right? Do you remember cheery cheery? Yeah. Wow. Forgot about that. It just, just like, now. yeah. Feeds off the light and starts getting bit yeah it's that's the rosharian dragon yeah you know you're right i totally forgot about that wow yeah yeah (laughs) yeah but dude this series gets so crazy it's it's astounding when you read ahead it's like it's overwhelming night and day yeah we got to enjoy this while we can because this is about to get dense mate that's why (laughs) that's why words of ratings is the sweet spot it's like all the excitement of the end of the way of kings with none of the like law and power creep overload that can happen later mm-hmm. that turns some people off not me but are we gonna read edge the novellas dancer. as we go by the way like are we gonna do edge dancer and oh yeah. Okay. oh yeah i was just curious yeah and yeah. i just decided to ask you that in the podcast instead you, of that. you have to slog through edge dancer again mate and we'll have pan- we'll eat pancakes while we do that episode here that's my treat i think that that will actually probably be a pretty good time um yeah because <laughs> there's oh. there's some good stuff in edge dancer Dude, you know what's an Edge Dancer? The bloody Sleepless and the Kremlin Hive Mind are like a huge part of Edge Dancer. That's, That's what I'm saying. There's st- there's good stuff in there. You just got to sift through the pancakes to get to it. Hey, you reading quotes from Edge Dancer is going to make for the best episode yet. Oh, are you a bike real nice, darling? Or? <laughs> oh, God. I, I don't know. I doing. love that. I love your like dodgy <laughs> British kid voice. It's not very posh. Yeah, 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 darling. Oz. <laughs> Down last glutes are peaking. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love this line of um, that he's really drawing the through line between Kaladin and Shalan. Um, mm-hmm. When she soul casts, and she could remember a vague feeling of light and beauty, a raging storm inside of her. Beautiful. At that moment, you're like, oh, whatever's happening to Kaladin is happening to Shalan. If you're a close reader, you would understand that, that these guys are probably like Sill, these pattern head mm-hmm. uh, beings who are like, I like how they're in the corner. Like they followed her to the hospital and now they're hiding in the corners. Like, man, this place is dodgy. Like what's going on here with these? They're getting death rattles. Do you think that they got attracted uh, whenever uh, Terry V comes in and starts just, you know, I guess he's not telling s- lies as mm. much as he's being sneaky. But Capsule's there, and he's lying. Yeah, Carbranth is just like the place to be for the cryptics. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he, he, ca- yeah, Capsule and Cal uh, and <laughs> Capsule and Caladin. No, Capsule and Shalana, are the ultimate lying power couple. They <laughs> really are. Um, God, he dies. It just, <laughs> I kind of, <laughs> he's dead. Like this is how he dies. It's pretty. 
it's pretty quick and kind of sad. It, and it's over. Like it's he, just done. he's out of the story. Done. Yeah, yeah. It never it's never to be talked about or seen again. I, I really couple. did feel like this scene was a little quick. Like I would almost say it was too quick. Um, but maybe I'm just putting too much emphasis on it. I think it's effective because of how sudden it is. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a, a, a page turner. Like you want to g- get right back to a Shalon chapter after this. Like she so casts her blood, dude. She's so casting like molecular level. Yeah. How do you even do that? It's like, okay, I go to the shades. My, I get like the bead of Shalon's like red blood cell. Hey, you want to be whatever she changes. Like what? How does that, how do you do that? Um, Hey, also, did you notice the Yasna like the Yasna flashback tease when she like gives the book to Shalan and she's like someone really yes. precious to me? So the yes, the the uh, book of endless pages is someone I want to ask you about, and then mm. Yasna smiled and said, "It's a metaphor, Shalan. Many years ago, someone <laughs> someone dear to me made me a very good attempt at converting me to Voranism." This was the method he used. And, and I'm like, wait, who is this? Why Vorianism? What happened to him? Did um did Yasna have her own capsule? She had her own like oh. little suitor. And that's why she's got no time for this. She was burned. But she seems to still think of this person in high regard. Ooh. It's a mad tease for the Yasna flashbacks. It definitely is. Almost almost of a, a Voran, a, Vor, a well-behaved Voran believer. Yes, I could have been. And um, I'm going to continue that because I highlighted that line. And then I highlighted the Shalan trailed off, noticing how Yasna's hand rested fondly on the book. It was precious to her. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Yeah. So she's obviously had some close relationship with somebody who almost got her to believe. It feels almost romantic, but we know that Yasna's, Yasna's asexual. She just still does pursue relationships with wit, but you know, it's not as clear cut as like, I'm just going to fall in love with a boy. Yeah. You know? So Mm -hmm. I wonder what the relationship was like, uh, what that she's describing. It could have been like a dear old, um, a long lost grandmother or a a mentor could have been a lover. It could have been a friend. Like we don't know. That's that's a good point. Yeah. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship, but I mean, I definitely took it for that. I actually almost felt like Yasna's story was going to be one of like trying to find belief and find love and then maybe not getting either. I could see it be a tragedy, a tragedy. Yeah. Like, she was so close and then they die and then her belief is shattered. And that's why she's such like a, a firm atheist or something. Yeah. I think it's also interesting that like you see Yasna learn to apologize, give up a, something that means a lot to her Shalon, pay her a compliment. And at the end of the chapter, she gets burned again when she figures out the Shalon is stolen. Oh, it's such a gut punch. It's such like a it's almost, moment. it sounds like it's probably like a repeat of maybe what's happened to her in her Could past be. as well. Who knows? Maybe like that, that person was using her. What if he I was a ghost she, blood? Who, who? And that's why she's killing ghost bloods. I mean, we, because Jimmy and I were talking before the show, like, why are the ghost bloods trying to kill Yasna? We found some info <gasps> that she's she's been like killing people. Bro, I know um, who it is. Who is it? Mraze. Oh my God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the rug pull of that? And, bro. Yeah, and he's playing coy. Like, we don't really know why Shalon started to kill all of us. And it's actually Marais. Yeah, Wouldn't that be yeah. wild? Yeah, yeah. Marais is just her ex, her bitter ex, sending incel capsules to go kill her. <laughs> <Incel>. <laughs> she likes bread, capsule. Get her. <laughs> I, you know what? Like, yes, that could be really cool. My mind started to go to like, she still has this fondness for this person by the way she talks about it. So mm. I could see like she almost believed and that that person's belief led to their demise. Which yeah, which pushed Yasna away and she's she's like man it's what a shame that they had mm. to go because of their belief. Um and she's like you know these these idiots are going to stay idiots I'm not going to prove them wrong. Um so maybe she wouldn't be so cold if yeah. she if it was the ca- that case but any anyway this will definitely be drawn upon whenever Yasna gets her flashbacks for certain. Um, 
So they talk about how rare strawberry is. And then I had to remind myself what was going on here. So the bread was poisoned and the jam was the antidote. That's why he was being so insistent. Like Shalon, dude, take this, take this antidote because we gonna die if we don't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, Yasna did eat the bread, but she didn't die. You know why? Because she bloody soul cast it on the spot. Isn't that the best? She so freaking good. changed it to I don't know what, but she changed it. No one even noticed. So that's why. And this also shows how advanced she is. Oh, right? dude. She's like beyond anything we can comprehend right now. I don't yeah. think there's any other scene where she someone's soul casting in this detail of like, let me just change your blood real quick. Yeah. That ain't it's normal. Weird. <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty wild to think that she has been to this point, which is why I think her backstory is going to be filled with, you know, maybe tragedy and all that stuff. But I think it's also going to be a big lore dro drop, drop, you know, in, in how did she get into this deep and mm. educate herself and, and what she found. I think also these epigraphs we're reading are probably going to be part of that, right? Yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah. Like Her whole like her whole persona as a whole will be explored. Why does she... Yeah. Why she got this inquisitive mind? Why is she obsessed with the history? Why all of these things, right? Mm -hmm. It's interesting. She goes, oh, I feel, I feel like I, I shouldn't be reading these quotes because we've got Jimmy voice actor, <laughs> uh, Jimmy Songbus VA. Um, but, but I'll do my best. I'm not even going to try and be you. I'm just going to be me. All right. Shalan Yasin's voice said, anxious, very soft. I'm going to have to soul cast your blood to purify it. It will be dangerous, extremely dangerous. I'm not good with flesh or blood. It's not where my talent lies. And my head was like, who's flesh and blood you've been practicing on, Yasna, that you know that? Yeah. Maybe her <laughs> own, possibly. That, oh, I, or maybe that's, that's how she tries to save that person that was dear to her, and then they Ooh. died in that moment, too. Well, that's cool. I mean, she practiced on those three th thugs in the street. She sure um, did. She, she changed them pretty quick. <laughs> um, but the way she says it, like, it, yeah, maybe herself, like I'm a, I'm a soul cast my skin to whatever to, as a tactical advantage or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, or the darker story is maybe she's got her own little hospital, the Yasna hospital, and she's, uh, running her own experiments. Tara Major maybe would she, be proud. Maybe she's running experiments in shades more. Just she's doing it on spren. Yeah. Can you imagine? Shades Mars Most Wanted. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we forgot to read the epigraph, by the way. I just realized. Oh, yeah, that. let's go to it. Let's do it. Uh, it's short. It's uh, they take away light wherever they lurk, skin that is burned. Hmm. I'm guessing like the fused. Well, like everyone's fueled by some sort of light in this yes. world, even the fused, the Pashendi. So I guess that that could be it. Like they're powered by light, skin that is burned. Classic, classic Parshendi reference. Yes, or fused listener reference. Um, I don't know, man. It's like all these Voidbringer quotes. I feel like we're almost beating a dead horse, a dead, yeah. a dead, um, a dead rice stadium, one might say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but we do get. I don't know if my ebook's messed up, but then we, it's like, hey, oh my God, Shlan's dying. Change her blood. Capsule's dead. She stole the soul cast. A big reveal. Next page. A uh, few, few pictures of rock buds, you know? Why yeah, not? no, that's that's what I have here too. Uh, it's just a bunch <laughs> of rock buds. Now, is this strategically placed? It, it feels a little weird. Like, why now, you know? Yeah, it's certainly not the time where you're like, I definitely need to um, think about some rock buds. You're like, what you, just happened? You know what? After this chapter, I want to refresh my mind on the ecology of Rosha. <laughs> Finer points. <laughs> I've always wondered about the, the what is that? The layers polyp? The I really vine wanted, bud. Yeah. yeah, the vine bud. Tell, teach me more about the vine bud. Um, I don't know if there's much to say. All, all, all I know is that my, one of my favorite theories that you had was like the rock bud that was like eating blood. I love that you pointed that out. I'm, I'm obsessed with that theory. Just saying, bro. That rock bud is getting getting the good stuff. Yeah, he's, he's eating good. But I suppose we can finally start wrapping this baby up and go to the, the final chapter the final. This, for the year. The, the final chapter of 2023 is chapter 49 to care uh 
which has an epigraph of this. It's a, it's a poem, I believe. Radiant of birthplace, the announcer comes to come announce the birthplace of radiance. Though I am not overly fond of the Katek poet, poetic form as a means of conveying information, this one by Alan is often quoted in reference to Irithiru. I believe some mistook the home of the Radiance for their birthplace. Mm, I love Katex, even though that one's a bit lackluster. The whole yeah. um, it's there are there are better ones out there. Um, the, I mean, what I love is that the the parts of of the of all the books are Katex as well. Though I'm not, I can't recall who actually wrote the the Katek. I think it's Navani actually for the one, the way of Kings. Oh, really? I mean, a quick Google would tell us, but the, um, here I'm, I'm pulling, I'm not pulling up. I'm actually holding my physical copy for once in my life. Um, so the parts are called, um, above silence, the illuminating storms, storms, illuminations, the silence above. Mm. So classic, classic attack back and forth (laughs) symmetry and all that. Don't remember who wrote that. Again, this one. I wonder what they mean by like the birthplace of radiance. Because like, where, who was like the first radiant? You had the heralds. How did they bestow this honor? Well, also like, how has it been? You know, like how how was it created? Like, what started? Yeah, it? yeah. A lot of questions here. Well, I'm just thinking because Kadex are also written as prayers and stuff. Who's announcing? I like this is so vague. I'm really kind of struggling. Yeah, this is a tough one. Yeah, I mean, she's it's part of her research to find um, Irithiru. I don't think it's the birthplace, like she said. Some is talk the home of the radiance for their birthplace. I do agree with what she's saying. Um, like someone's announcing the birthplace of radiance. That's interesting to me. It sounds like something about a herald talking to the um, Bronze Age dummies of that time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, it gives us a question, like, who's doing the announcing? Where's the birthplace? It yeah. was not Irithiru, most likely. So where is it? We're kind of with Yasna on this one. Yeah. We ain't smarter than the expert. Um, neither is the rest of Roshar, because did you notice how they don't know about gravity? Did you notice no, that? No, no. <laughs> because like Sill's defying it. She's like walking on the wall of the chasm and Kaladin's like ground spread didn't pull her downward as they did everything else. So they attribute gravity to ground spread. Interesting. Um, in before Brando like confirms like ground spread is gravity on Rosha, but still, I still find <laughs> it kind of funny. They're like, oh yeah, ground spread. That's why we can't Quantum go up. gravity. Yeah, <laughs> the ever elusive quantum gravity. Um, I guess I should summarize this chapter. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's all good. It's, uh, Kaladin and the rest of the bridge four are walking through the chasms. Kaladin thinks about where the water goes, and it might be possible to escape to the east if his dreams are real. He is pulled out of his thoughts by Teft, who questions him about his health, whether he feels surges of strength or perhaps light. Thinking about it, Kaladin notes how fast he healed from uh, and wonders if he might be cursed like someone who sought out the old magic and magic has a capital M by the way, he mm. considered if maybe Syl is not the only spren following him and maybe an evil one as well. They find themselves at a crossroad and Kaladin decides to use this spot for their training. He tells the bridgeman that normally in military training, the sergeant will attempt to humble the soldiers at first, but they don't need that because they don't dream of glory. They just want to escape and survive. His first lesson is that a soldier should care, not be cold and emotionalist. He drops the spear and tells them that the second lesson is to learn to stand before holding a spear. He tells Scar to push him over and he can't do it, even when the others come to help. He tells Teft to pair them off and to practice and oversee the training. And Teft responds like a soldier revealing his past military experience. 
When he looks at Kaladin, he can see that Kaladin also noticed it. Kaladin goes a little apart with Rock, who explains why he cannot fight. Kaladin sends him along with Lopin, Dabid, and Shen to collect sal- uh, salvage. When Rock notes that he can't do the work of a whole bridge crew, Kaladin has Syl make herself visible to the rest so that she can help them search more quickly. Kaladin assures Lopin that he will receive training, but that it is more important now to bring up the quota of salvage so as to not be discovered. He rejoins the crew and helps Teft. The men learn in hours what should have been Oh, I'm sorry. The men, yeah, the men learn in hours which should have taken them days to learn. Kaladin realizes that the bridgemen have been prepared by training, by physical intensity of their bridge duty. Mm. I mean, theory wise, I don't really have much for this. I thought it's just like a really enjoyable bridge four chapter. The boy it is. Yeah. And it's major stuff, right? Tef's military background. We get yeah. a little bit more about rock and, you know, we can question all of the stuff oh. that, that pertains to his people. And, and we're going to get that novella, which is going to be great. But also, you know, still becoming visible. I mean, this is a big, yeah, big, big thing. Um, and then Lopin getting a little bit of responsibility. I thought the, the whole like old magic. What is that referring to? Am I dumb? Um, If you're dumb, I'm dumb, mate. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> bummer. <laughs> All right. Old cool. magic is capitalized. That's why I'm just so yeah. intrigued by that. I just, hey, there's a whole page on the copper mine, baby. All right. All right. Thanks, the nerd. old magic. <laughs> the old magic is a manifestation of investiture, your favorite word, on Rosha. The old magic predates spren bonds while there are other unknown elements to the old magic no one on roshar has been confirmed to know or make use of it as such the most prevalent form of old magic comes in the form of boons and curses a person can gain a single unique ability from the old magic but are also given a unique curse along with their boon which may or may not be related so like that's what the Night Watcher did to to Kaladin. Yeah, you it. actually have to go to the Night Watcher to get it. It looks like. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, she's the dealer. She's the old magic dealer. <laughs> she's the clerk. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um. So they've got they've got some examples um here, which is interesting. I forgot about these minor characters. I know Lift Dal and our entire engine, but they mentioned Av. Oh, this is interesting as well. The old magic can be given to any sapient species, including ones not from Roshar. A person's boon and curse stay with them for life and will stay with them if they leave Roshar. The boons and curses are limited to a particular manner. According to Lyft, those who have the old magic have a certain smell. Many of... Many view uh, old magic as inscrutable. There is more to old magic than just boons and banes. However, there is no person currently known to make use of that. That is a very interesting line there is more to old magic than just boons and banes however there's no person currently known to make use of that cultivation will sometimes uh intervene and grant her own boons and curses for a far more calculated manner and may use the old magic to distract from her own inf- interference possibly creating the phenomenon so hmm you know what i just thought of is like teft losing his memories like does he lose his memories? I thought so. Am I crazy? I think he just doesn't like to talk about his past. I thought I thought for some reason, or maybe I'm thinking of another book. Yeah, I think it's going to Dalinar. Dalinar. F- well, Dal- I knew that, oh. but like, yeah, you know what? I'm just going to shut up on this one. I, think, I, think <laughs> no, I don't know. Maybe you're right. Like, look, there's a lot of instances of it that are very esoteric. The thing is, like, I quite like, for a Sando fan, I quite like the soft magic. You know, quite like a bit of soft magic, even though this seems pretty hard. It'll like, be explained by the end of the. <laughs> <laughs> what it does, it reminds me of when you get a dawn shard as well. It seems like it comes with a boon, like how Hoyd is unable to hurt anybody. He can't partake in any violence. Um, yeah. So maybe the old magic is involved with dawn shards as well. And kind of to argue with myself, actually, it says uh, Brandon Sanderson built old magic into the Stormlight Archive because he felt at a certain point he wanted there to be a contrast to rule based magic systems. He wanted there to be a primal magic that didn't really adhere to rules, one that couldn't be anticipated. Brandon felt that if it 
it was vital to include so that he didn't over explain everything in the books characters in some ways can be given wish fulfillment and even that can turn on its head because old magic as uh as it doesn't give people what they think they should have gotten which i love this because you know me mm. and you have talked about like do we really want all these things explained i mean you both have said kind of not and if that's what the old magic's role is in the story then i love old magic agreed hard agree it keeps and it's also fresh. kind of cheeky isn't it it's a bit cheeky mate old magic like the old magic before i wrote hard magic systems right wink, wink. <laughs> oh that is yeah yeah break it a bit cheeky. meta i like it <laughs> that's a good point um oh i was just thinking of another, another instance of it but i've lost it um but yeah look old magic's i hope i hope we get a bit more of it because it, it's uh, mm-hmm. things are feeling pretty like it's like we've got rules that are pretty like the barriers are set up pretty tight by the fifth book. I'd like to see some wackiness, you know? Yeah. I think that also we're going to have to see night watcher at some point, like proper, right. We're going to go back there. Like current day. Yeah. I yeah. think we will with we'll lift and stuff yeah. because like we don't, I don't look, I could check the cop of mine, but I don't think we know what lift actually said. Um, I think it's like she didn't want to grow up or something to that effect. That's why she's struggling so much, um, Mm -hmm. getting older. And that's why she's always like so immature and silly. And like, I think she forever refers to herself as 10 and she stops counting after that. So there's some sort of identity (laughs) crisis of growing up and stuff. I wonder what, I guess her thing is that she get, gets lifelight instead of stormlight. Maybe that's that. Um, and she can also go into the visions I'm reading now, which doesn't seem to be normal. Anyway, she's got her whole, whole thing going on, which will be explored further in the back half as well as she becomes a main POV, I believe. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, good times in the chasms with the boys. Yeah, good. just kind of broing down, man. Just throwing down. Everyone's got something to do. My well, we life. also we also did talk about the shattered planes uh, last week and why are they shattered? Why is there a pattern? And you know, shattered honor shattering, the splintering. Like, mm. I think this might be at the center site where this happened to honor. And Kaladin kind of talks about like how one side of it is worn, right, mm, yeah. more than the other. And yeah. I was thinking about there's a reference to the West, right? As like, like they refer to what is the thing they reference in the West? Like the source or something? What do they call it? The origin origin. Yeah. Are, like is the, the side of, from. yeah. Is the side of the chasms more worn on that side? I'm just, I'm, I got to look up which direction the origin is in. So I can pull up the map and cross-reference. Um, east. It is believed to exist to the far east of the planet's main landmass. Because the thing is, right, we got the map of Roshar. We don't know if it's all of Roshar. Hmm. That's the thing. That's good. Um, <laughs> I'm telling you, there's another continent, even though we've barely explored this one. Because like when they talked about the the water of the Shattered Plains needing to drain somewhere, it's still kind of inland. There are some rivers close by, but it's not clear which way that's going. Um, but I mean, looking at the map of Rosha and looking at the size of the Shattered Plains, that is, that is a in, like not an insignificant amount of like an, an impact. It's it's pretty wild. Yeah. What well, what was your a question again? I was just wondering because I, I and I may even be remembering wrong, but I thought in the chapter he had kind of remarked that once like there there is a different type of wear on one side. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah. And, and and I just thought that that was a bit significant. And I was mm. wondering if maybe the origin had something to do with it. Um, just thinking about directions and things that we've heard. But I do like the idea. I think someone commented about this, that the Shattered Plains may be the impact from honor falling. Yeah, I mean, that would be very, very cool. Or also like the origin itself seems to be very significant because we had that crazy mm-hmm. water spread thing that would stare at the origin like at a certain point every yeah. day. Like, 
what what's going on over there like i feel like there's like if we just could get more of the map to the right there would be some crazy <laughs> yeah thing. could you just move over a little bit <laughs> yeah just nudge it over because <laughs> it's like because the right-handed ocean is called the ocean of origins hmm. so what hmm. is that yeah i don't know i really don't know i mean maybe that's where the spaceship entered at like yeah, someone kept going with our air theory spaceship uh, theory. Fair um, yeah, but look, man, great chapters, great chapters to end the year on, I believe. Yeah, and knowing uh, you know next time when we cover these two chapters, very short, um, you know, we're we're done with part three. I would encourage you all uh, to read ahead, and before we do this next episode, which you have plenty of time since we're going to be taking off the end of the year here. And mm -hmm. when we come back, we'd love to see some span reads at lost in gmail.com about this part, specifically part three, maybe some of the theories that we talked about or your theories and things that you pulled from this section. It would be a nice way to wrap up the section before we hit these interludes in two episodes from now, um, because these next two chapters are pretty short. So we're definitely going to be doing some span read stuff. We do have a ton uh, <laughs> in the inbox, but it would be great to have some that are, you know, relevant to what what we've been reading over the past few weeks yeah hit us up over the over the new year and we'll uh try and get through as many as we can there have been some amazing ones that i'm, I'm itching to talk about i mean mm -hmm. I'll, I'll hint at one now but like the fact that somebody mentioned our question of whether we could like what the he rude hand gesture was to they actually asked sanderson at dragon seal and he answered it and the crowd went wild as he made this action and the I ripples of the uh, podcast mate yeah i hope maybe it was like you know lost in roshar posed <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah these two idiots online. i want sanderson to acknowledge me just you specifically jimmy stormblessed i i and i just if, if he just says oh those guys over at lost in roshar they're doing great work i i admire them i'd be like oh thanks man <laughs> not gonna happen ever <laughs> it's just never. never ever gonna happen uh uh we're just fortunate we're two little kremlings <laughs> in a big wide world i do Sanderson. feel like we're kind of the outlaws <laughs> we're the outlaws of roshar mate we uh you got stuck with me i'm sorry <laughs> hey mate till the end till the very end um <laughs> yeah there's something about us i'm like will we be will be will we be allowed into the fold maybe not maybe not but um regardless we'll be lost on lost in roshar for some time to come i believe yeah i think so and uh thank you guys for a great first i mean it hasn't been a year yet but it feels like the end of something because you know we're heading into 2024 next year's going to be huge for the podcast we've got book five coming out i just can't wait to build up as much hype and as and build this community as much as we can before that that book drops yeah and and see Kaladin go to the moon i mean it's all but confirmed at this point. <laughs> <laughs> um, but as always, guys, thank you for accompanying us on this episode of Lost in Rosha. Remember, the most important chapter a man can read is the next one. We'll see you next year to dive into chapters 50 and 51 and listen and respond to your span reads. Yes, and finish up part three of The Way of Kings. If you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, be sure to leave us a review on whichever platform that you listen on. You can also drop us a comment at Lost in Discovery on YouTube. If you have any span reads or some ideas or feelings about the last section or anything at all Stormlight related, please send us a span read at lostinroshar at gmail.com. We'll see you next time here on Lost in Roshar. And remember to keep that safe hand covered. <laughs>